before we start creating styles, you know, let me just quickly go through how to create a class and what it is. If you already know this, feel free to skip to the next lesson. I'm basically going to be talking about classes, about using Flexbox, about, uh, you know, using REM and BAM and all these other conventions. And so if you want to jump ahead, feel free. This is just an extra class. You know, <laughs> the CSS class is a type of selector that describes how a certain part of the website looks. So once you define what color, size, or other properties uh, some element should have, you can select it in the HTML. For example, you know, you can see that here I'm selecting some navbar navigation class, for example, or here you have the content class and so on. Um, so obviously the, the pre-coded HTML can give you a clue how to name your CSS classes. So if you look on top of the HTML file, you can see that the first class we have here is root and flexbox. So let's just create these two right, real quick. Right. And uh, so what actually is, is flexbox? Um, well, flexbox, you know, is an efficient way to, to lay out and align uh, space amongst items in a container. So, um, you know, a flex container expands, this is the container and these are the items. So a flex container expands items uh, to fill available free space or shrinks them, but it prevents them to overflow. So they, you know, this square wouldn't overflow with this one. So what does this class do? The root uh, actually is a selector that matches the document root element, which is in this case is the HTML. So um, the reason I'm actually using flex is that you can set the direction of the layout, you know, not just use the block or inline, but uh, you can do pretty much what you want. So to establish the, the main, main axis of our elements, you know, if you go through this document right here, you can see that uh, the elements can be sorted in different directions and that the direction could be row, row reverse, column and column reverse. So I'm actually going to use the column. Let's just copy this, go back, paste this in. I'm also, since I'm editing this class, I'm actually going to add minimum height. It's 100% to fill the whole uh, area of the browser. Since I have the direction of the elements, I now want to center all of the items inside these containers. So um, if you look in the HTML, here you can see that I'm using uh, a class that's called align center. And inside, I'm just going to type in align items center. So basically this defines the default behavior of, of how flex items are laid out. Um, and actually, if you uh, investigate my HTML a bit further, you might be wondering why I'm using, um, you know, these underlines or um, these dashes to name my classes. Well, uh, I'm, I'm using the block element modifier. Uh, it's, it's sort of a convention to name your classes. Uh, it's also known as BEM or BEM. And it basically makes sure that I don't mix up my classes or don't override them. Additionally, when someone is, you know, reading your code, reviewing it or editing it, it's much easier to read when you stick to something like the BEM convention. Another thing we need to establish before we start coding styles is the unit of our font size. So obviously you could use pixels, but when you define a font size in pixels, it will always stay the same. When someone is struggling with reading the text in the browser, he might want to adjust the font size. Uh, so if we are going to be using rem, all the fonts uh, will scale relatively to uh, some base unit that we that we set. So the most common example, and that's what I'm going to be doing, is to say, set HTML font size at 10 pixels and then the paragraph uh, at um, 12 pixels actually. 
and type in font size, type in 1.2 RAM. Since we're going to use uh, RAM in our upcoming lessons to export CSS code, let's just quickly jump to Avacode and adjust the settings. So uh, just select some layer and click on this wheel, go to code settings, click on advanced settings and choose RAM as units. And the base value is 10 pixels. So we can close that. It's automatically saved. And now let's go back. Okay. And uh, one last thing uh, before we end this lesson is that, you know, some web browsers often add margins and paddings and I need to make sure that I'm the one who's actually setting the rules to my CSS. So I'll add this uh, like a little selector at the top of the CSS file. Like this. Let's type in margin zero padding zero. And what it does is basically make sure that by default margin and padding is zero and it respects how we set them further on in our classes. Okay, so if you would like to learn more about, uh, you know, BAM or RAM or um, Flexbox, uh, make sure to check out the links in the description.